What's up, YouTube? Capital G here. Got some interesting Rocket Duels for you guys to check out involving a really spicy tech card that definitely could see some competitive play. I looked at this card and I was like, whoa, I think that's actually pretty legitimate, especially if you don't need to rely on your normal summon completely. Think of a deck like Jack Knights. They hardly ever normal summon at all. Everything is basically special summon based. And I think that a deck like that could definitely capitalize off this card. It's not in this duel, if I'm not mistaken, but I think that this is... Uh, like five duels and he does end up losing some and the duels actually range from like completely casual as he's playing in uh, the first duel against the cybers deck to very actually meta he's going to play pendulum magicians as well and uh, his builds kind of all over the place to be honest it's obviously super link based and he's going to make Borolo dragon a bunch including turn one right off the <laughs> right off the break man <laughs> he goes straight for Borolo dragon i'm not sure if he really uses that many rockets in the first duel he uses Link Slayer, tries to go after that back row. Scapegoat is looking really nice. That's why I like Scapegoat, man. Because if your opponent tries to pop it, you can just chain it. But if your opponent doesn't pop it, then, you know, it is that one card, Borlo Dragon. He's using some of the new Cyberus cards. He's going to go for Encode Talker. It is going to be able to take down the Borlo Dragon. So that's kind of unfortunate. But he still gets to keep three of his GOAT tokens. So, I mean, the chances of him making a Borlo Dragon in this play are very good. He goes Misses, Link Spider, boom, Borlo Dragon comes right back to the field and i'm pretty sure he's going to snatch still one of those monsters yeah Enco talker works for me now he's playing the um the white and black dragons i think they're pretty good and rockets because they have obviously a lot of dark so summoning white dragons pretty easy then if you link summon with it not only does it count as an effect monster uh, an effect monster towards that borlo dragon but then obviously you know it can just be when it when it goes off field then you get your copy of black dragon as well look what he's doing i love how he's <laughs> he's using the battle faders in his hand he's like I'm not going to use those cards. Let me just put them on the field to link summon with. And I think he's actually going to go into Topological Bomber Dragon. It's a pretty cool field. Not a lot of times you see three uh, Link 4 Dragons on the field at the same time. Uh, in addition to a Deco Talker. As this guy has Topological Firewall and Borlo Dragon. Pretty impressive. Let's go ahead and skip to the bottom and get his duel versus Pendulum Magicians. This one's going to be kind of grindy. But, um, you know, he is playing against a competitive deck. So don't expect miracles. Don't expect him to win every single one of these duels. Pendulum Guy does something questionable here. And using Cosmic Cyclone on his own uh, which one is that? Black Fang? On his own Iris Magician, excuse me. Then he just goes into the Resident Sleeper number 41. I was like, what exactly, like, what was he trying to do there? I didn't really understand it. Uh, yeah, that was kind of a, a puzzling play, but it's, it's fine. Uh, he does force Rockets in, uh, to pretty much a play where they can't do anything. Not a lot of times do you see people actually keep 41 in defense mode for two turns, but I guess he felt like he didn't have the cards he needed. Now that he has Joker, now that he has that Toon Magician, pretty much feels like he can do some proactive plays. That's going to get hit with Solemn Strike. Uh, maybe he should have saved it. It's fine. His Rocket's going to survive the first attack, and then he is going to go for Goats. Usually, I don't like letting my Goats, like, I don't generally let my Goats take attacks. Like, I'm, I'm not about that. I, I would rather you hit my life points than you hit my Goats. He got a really good Solemn on the, on the Deco Talker because, like, let's just pause for a second if he, he right now he could have had a little less life points but then he would have had four goats on the field and maybe that could have went for a big link summon but it is actually okay because the cosmic compass this is the tech card i was talking about it is actually going to uh print out basically another token so this card is a level one and it says when this card is normal summon you can special summon uh a number of co or excuse me a number of compass tokens their machine earth uh zero attack zero defense level one up to the number of monsters your opponent can Control. So if your opponent does have a big board, you get a lot of monsters. Not exactly a monster you can throw on the field when your opponent doesn't have much, but if you're going second, it's not a bad card at all, especially because how many decks in Yu-Gi-Oh don't really summon turn one? Like everybody wants everybody wants to put something on the board. So I think it's actually a pretty cool card. Goes for Borlo Dragon. As his opponent uses, he used that um, that pendulum graph of space time earlier to kill Mrs. Radiant, which just put the uh, that put the compass right back in his hand. So I don't know why he did that, but it's fine. Borlo Dragon is ultimately going to die, and he is in a bad spot here. If not for that copy of Battle Fader, he might have actually just lost outright here. Goes into Side Frame Lord Omega that prompts the Battle Fader to come down. He's going to go ahead and pick out uh, pick out the compass out of his hand, and I think he is going to try to go for another Link Summon. And blowing up white dragon definitely a mistake because all that's going to do is give him a search from black dragon so i don't know maybe he thought that he wasn't running it but usually those cards are paired he goes for deco talker which 
is cute, but I mean, the second he runs over the Black Fang, Deco Talker now goes to an abysmal 2300, uh, and you knew the Omega was coming back, so he, all he has to do is just pop, and uh, I think he can actually close out the door right there. No, he didn't. He's not. He, he didn't. <laughs> he left them at 700. And I thought, okay, okay, yeah, okay he's got the comeback here. Cosmic Camp, uh, Cosmic Campus, Cosmic uh, Compass is going to give him three tokens in which he basically has to make his play off of. But that space time is just doing too much work here. And he gets them down low, but just not enough. 3,000 damage, actually not even close to enough. He could have went for a Link 2, hypothetically, but what Link 2 can kill Omega? So ultimately, he does uh, lose that duel. Let's go to another the one towards the top see how it goes i think this one is oh yeah this one is against yang zings yang zings are i don't know do they need a link monster i feel like yang zings probably wouldn't benefit all that much from a link monster um because yang zings i mean they can put a lot of monsters on the field with the like they can put a lot of monsters on the field because they they do float and with jiao too but I don't know. It'd have to be a really, really good one. He does make Bills. Uh, Bills is not that strong against Rockets because Borlo Dragon just kind of shits on Bills. Goes for Cosmic uh, Compass, and at that point, he's easily going to drop Borlo Dragon. It does fall into a Solemn Strike, though. So I mean, he's got that going for him. It looks like he just wants to. He just wants to play defensively here. Uh, Bills used to be really good, but having Bills lock up your extra monster zone for a card that can be outed with Castell, just not sure how far it's really going to go in uh, today's Yu-Gi-Oh. There's just like too many ways to just completely uh, out Bills easily, let alone the Kaijus and whatnot. So, Scapegoat enters another Borlo. And this time, I think he's going to go for Proxy Dragon. And he might summon one of his rockets. Yeah, he does. He summons it from uh, Quick Resolve. Quick Resolve or Quick Revolve? I think it's Quick Revolve like uh like revolver quick revolve okay yeah i gotta make sure we uh give them <laughs> give the correct names on the cards and even though they are yang zings and they float you will eventually run out of them um plus you know borlo dragon can also steal them so that doesn't help either so he's now getting overwhelmed and i don't know if you guys uh saw that or not but his bills uh if he found the new owner he's like i want to work on the winning team he, he uses jiao too unfortunately when the rocket is blown up that's the one that actually has the uh the phoenix chain and there's really nothing that the yangzing player could have honestly done he knows that he has to scoop because jiao too is just going to get ran over and it's probably just going to die during that next turn i believe that these last two duels are against zodiac to draco which i actually just top dated a regional over the last weekend i believe it was philadelphia something like four or five hundred people it was definitely over 400 people and he got third place it definitely makes a lot of sense there are a lot of continuous uh spells that zodiac give the true dracos not only the tributes but to use from the graveyard for masterpiece thank tinky uh zodiac barrage also still at three he goes drawing lockbird which um i mean I, I guess to the untrained eye, it looks like it would have been a good play there, but doesn't really do that much. Uh, Rockets don't really search. Uh, he, he is going to use uh, Ash Forehead on the Quick Revolve, and I thought he was going to drop Masterpiece this turn, so it's really not looking so good for Rockets. They are kind of a slow setup deck. You guys know a lot of he, a lot of the plays he's been using uh, have basically come through like Scapegoat and whatnot. Ignis Seed is going to activate off the Battle Fader. And I do believe he is going to drop Masterpiece, which he in fact does. Uh, Bat to the front is going to get blown up. He's going to go for Tiger Mortar. He already has Mrs. Radiant on the field. Let's see, it's looking pretty good. He uses Squib Draw, which is going to net him a couple of cards and a Search. He has Scapegoat, but the scape, like Scapegoat against a Masterpiece is kind of slow. Like your opponent, if you, especially if it's the only back row that you set as he just did. Like if you if you just set one back row, like your opponent's going to probably pop it at that point. If he can somehow get uh, Borlo Dragon on the field, it can definitely mess up Masterpiece because, you know, Masterpiece can't blow it up and Borlo is stronger. Throws down the Battle Fader, so he is getting trolled by Battle Fader, and uh, he has another copy in his hand. <laughs> Let's see if he'll ever be able to drop that Borlo Dragon. He gets the Cosmic Compass, and that actually gives him a lot of monsters, and I think he is going to go for Borlo, which he does drop, and I was like, "Let's go. This is the comeback. Masterpiece is going to try and pop a monster." And I don't know if you guys can see that, right? The way that this chain is going, um, you see the Ghost Ogre being chained. The Ghost Ogre is only being chained to the Rocket Monster. It's not being chained to Borload because obviously Borload, you can't respond directly to that effect. So even though he is using Ghost Ogre here, it's not even going to touch the Borlo Dragon. And that's a problem because Borlo Dragon is looking pretty damn tough. Although I guess Whiptail could answer that. So he actually is able to out Masterpiece. I was impressed by that. Top Deck's another copy 
of Ghost Ogre. And once again, you see Ghost Ogre being chained, but it cannot directly chain to the, um, what's it called? It can't be directly chained to the, the copy of Borlo because you can't, your opponent can't respond to that activation. So it unfortunately is going to go down because Deco Talker is just a little too strong. And once that, once that Borlo got killed, I was like, yeah, I, I think that's it. Cause that's his second Borlo, if I'm not mistaken. There's one and he summoned one earlier and oh no excuse me that was that was his only boro load okay my bad i must be thinking of one of the other uh past duels but yeah once he lost that boro load there i didn't think he was going to run this one back especially with true king's return hitting the field getting masterpiece back and let me just pause for a second as he gets uh his copy of zodiac barrage i'm just looking to see if he has any continuous spells or traps he does have a tenki so yeah the masterpiece is actually loaded with one more shot Goes for Zodiac Ram Ram. I think it would have been maybe better to just keep the, uh, like, I think it would have been more preferable to keep the the copy of uh, of Barrage in the graveyard just to have more shots for Masterpiece. He's basically on his last leg here with the uh, copy of, um, of Battle Fader stopping his opponent from attacking. But, I mean, just look at the board. And this is this is why I think that that Zodiac, um, that True Draco Zodiac probably topped because he was probably making boards like this. Still a fairly strong grind uh, deck, but there just wasn't any card that I could see getting him out of this situation outside of evenly matched. <laughs> that might have been the only card in the game that could have possibly brought him back, but he would have still had Battle Fader on the field. But this like absolutely seals it as he summons a second copy of Masterpiece. I think this might have been too premature because I believe that he's going to pop the Battle Fader with the effect of Masterpiece. I felt like uh, that that might have been... Oh, no, no, excuse me. He pops it with True King's Return. Okay, fair enough. For some reason, I thought that he was going to pop it like banishing one of his continuous spells or traps. And I'm like, bro, that, that's totally unnecessary. So game is basically over at this point unless he top decks evenly match. He top decks a Solemn Strike. That's not going to do him any good with 550 life points. And ultimately, he does lose this duel. And then we have his final duel. I think that he actually did over okay there um especially considering he was able to take down the first masterpiece deco talker I, I, from what i've seen he doesn't really have any traps in his deck i think that something like uh I, I don't know maybe like you know forbidden lances to protect borlo dragon even more like maybe that would work in the deck i believe that the that these guys played um a multiple amount of matches with the zodiac true draco or this might be a pure version let me just pause and figure it out to see if this is the same exact guy. Nope. Okay, it is a uh, true Draco version of Zodiac. See, in this case, he actually gets the scapegoat resolved, and this is just why I like scapegoat because on like on the off chance that you do, I can't even say off chance. If you do actually get it off, then you can just have really big plays. And even though he had the whip tail set up, the whip tail would have actually wrecked him. But the Borlo player or the rocket player was smart. He decided to chain. He decided to use his rocket, uh, his rocket effect that was basically a skill drain against the um, was that Borbo? Yeah, I believe that was Borbo. So even with the whip tail attached to it, it doesn't matter. Borbo no longer has an effect. I don't understand why he used Cosmic Cyclone there. <laughs> He was at 1600. No, he's at 2600 life points, and then he soul charged for a thousand. I guess it doesn't really matter because he only had one monster to actually like bring back, if I'm not mistaken, with the uh, copy of soul charge, or at least he didn't have many monsters. So maybe he was just giving up on the duel. But when you resolve that scapegoat, completely different duel, especially considering you can have Ash Blossom in your hand and she just doesn't say anything with Ghost Ogre, it doesn't stop the plays that this deck wants to do. So I definitely feel like there is some room for improvement with his build i mean he plays some solemns but i don't know i feel like a couple more ways to protect the uh, borlo dragon that should definitely be the win condition maybe even supply squad anyways if you guys are interested in the build of course i will have it in the description of the video actually yeah i'm gonna have it in the description of the video because i don't have it already built people were saying that i should just show the deck really quickly at the end of the video which i i can definitely start doing just give it a quick one i'm not gonna explain everything if you guys want me to do that though anyways whatever you guys thought leave it in the comment section below thank you guys for watching as always and subscribe if you have not already